At the beginning of the week, we saw the new and delete operators in C++. And we saw that having complete control over dynamic memory, taking full responsibility for manually allocated things, is a lot of work and it's pretty dangerous. That memory leaks are a very real danger and they can crop up no matter how careful you are as the, as the program gets larger and larger. In the meantime, we've also seen some uses where evidently we do need manual low-level allocation, for example, our int vector class, and when done correctly, it is safe. So our int vector class, once we wrote it and tested it, we were able to ascertain that it was managing memory correctly. What we want to do now, though, over the next couple of weeks is talk about some data structures that are a bit more complicated. Not just one array that we're allocating dynamically, as in our vector, but, for example, linked lists, which are a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of different individually allocated things. And we want to disconnect our linked lists, in some cases, and then reconnect them to things. And that, of course, um, results in the opportunity for memory leaks to occur. And I mentioned um, long, long ago when talking about memory leaks that one of the ways you can prevent them is by using some form of memory management. Do not take full responsibility. Don't use new and delete. So the obvious example of that is why not just use scoped allocation? Why not just allocate local variables? That takes care of all that work for you. And strangely, it's actually faster. But scoping does impose constraints that we can't always uh, abide by. So if we're, I guess, uh, creating linked lists or something, we might want to allocate a node of a list inside of a function and have that list node live longer than the function does. I want it to outlive its scope. So there are cases where scope allocation doesn't work. And up until this point, all we've known about is scoped allocation and fully um, manually allocated dynamic memory, so new and delete. But there are other options. The same way that deep down STD vector is allocating stuff with new and delete. But when you use STD vector via encapsulation, you don't have to worry about that. There are ways that we can wrap around manual allocation um, that allow us to avoid for certain settings like simple data structures such as linked lists, um, the question of when do objects get destroyed and is somebody destroying them. We can use, for example, something called smart pointers, which are one basic um, memory management scheme. So wait, what is a memory leak again? Memory leak is where I create some object, and over time I have various pointers to that object, and we know that we have to use pointers because if I create the object outside of a scope, um, there's only, only way of referring to it inside of a scope is by pointing to it, because if the object were in the scope with me, then it would get destroyed with the scope. So I create an object and I have various pointers to it. And then over time, pointers come and go and some pointers get redirected or they get destroyed. And eventually at some point, I end up with the very last pointer to an object. Maybe I forget or maybe I don't know that it's the last pointer, but I let this pointer disappear as well. And once the very last pointer is gone, the object is lost. It's still there, but it hasn't been deallocated and nobody can ever delete it. So it's a memory leak. How do we prevent that? Well, I mean, frankly, the, the obvious answer is when you're the person with the very last pointer to the object, you need to make sure that you delete the object, that you destroy it. But that's harder than it sounds because unless you're the only person that's ever had a pointer to the object, if multiple pointers have existed, how do you know when you have the last one? And just keep in mind, if there is more than one pointer to the object and you have this pointer here and you think you have the last pointer, well, you say, oh, I have the last pointer. I guess I better destroy the object. And then your pointer goes away. You've just left whoever has this other pointer in a pretty difficult situation because maybe they try to destroy the object or maybe they try and use the object. As we saw in a previous video, if um, the object has been destroyed, you can't try and ever use it or destroy it again. So it's not just a matter of having the last pointer and not, and not knowing about it. It's also about having a pointer you think is the last pointer but being wrong. The only time the object can be destroyed is when you have the last pointer. If anybody ever wants to use it after you've destroyed it, they can't. So it's not just about making sure you don't forget that you have the last pointer. It's about making sure you forget that you don't forget that you don't have the last pointer. Okay, how about this? Here's a scheme that might help. It doesn't help in all cases. It actually breaks pretty badly um, when you get complicated enough data structures, but it will work for this course. Here's a scheme that might help. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, we'll begin by creating the object. I'm going to create the object and I'm going to tag the object at the corner with a little, with a number. So it's going to say zero. And when I create the object, I get one pointer to it, just like I do when I use the new operator. Every time a pointer is created to my object, I increment the tag. So now it says one. Later, I create a second pointer to the object. Okay, so I increment the tag. 
It's two. And I'm somehow guaranteed that if I use these special pointers, we're going to call them smart pointers, if I use these special pointers, then every time a pointer is created to the object, no matter how I create it, then the tag gets incremented. So now there are three. And then suppose this pointer here goes out of scope. When the pointer goes out of scope, the smart pointer automatically decrements the tag. You now it says two. And then this pointer goes out of scope, and it decrements the tag. Now it says one. And then finally, this pointer goes out of scope. And as it goes out of scope, it decrements the tag. And the tag now says zero. And the pointer says, hey, I'm a smart pointer. I know that when the tag says zero, that means that I'm the last one out the door. So I better turn off the lights. Whichever pointer is holding on when the object, is, when the object goes down to zero, that pointer supervises the destruction of the object. And we can be guaranteed, as long as everybody follows the rules and keeps that tag updated, that whenever that last pointer gets destroyed, if it always checks, then the object will always get destroyed along with it. This is called a smart pointer. And maybe you hear that word smart and it rings a few bells. Think about all the limitations of C-style arrays, and now think about what a vector does for you. A vector presents you the abstraction of an array but with all sorts of nice smart features like knowing its size, being able to grow and shrink. In a sense, this smart pointer I'm going to talk about is sort of um, is to regular pointers what a vector is to a C-style array. The smart pointer gives you the features that regular pointers do, the ability to point at things and to make copies of the pointer and pass them around the program, but it also comes with some smart stuff, like being able to manage the underlying memory, to make sure that it gets deleted when the last pointer gets destroyed. So a smart pointer is just a regular object. It's a class from our standard library, just like vector is a class from our standard library as well. We've proven that we could write our own vector class, and although we're not going to do it, you could write your own smart pointers. There's nothing special about them besides that they use abstraction to help you not worry about memory management. That's it. They provide a very simple memory management scheme. We'll talk a bit later about one of the reasons why they're not perfect. For complicated data structures, smart pointers won't do the trick. The basic idea behind the smart pointer that I talked about, this idea of tagging the object with a number, is something called reference counting. Just keeping track of how many pointers exist to an object means that when the last pointer goes, you can destroy the object. This doesn't work for some data structures that are constructed in certain ways, but we'll leave that for now. For now, we'll just talk about what, what smart pointers are. We're going to use one particular type of smart pointer in this, in this course course, um, the type is going to be std colon colon shared pointer. The word shared there is to indicate that this is a pointer we can make copies of and pass around our program. There are other types of smart pointers. We're not going to worry about them in this course. Um, shared pointer is in the header called memory. So you'll notice we, are, we often include that header in this part of the course. Here I have the slim down fruit class that we saw in the very first video from this week. All it does is tell us when it's being constructed and when it's being destructed. My goal in this video is to show off what a smart pointer is, how to create it, and to prove that even though I don't need to use the delete operator anymore because the smart pointer handles it, that everything still gets handled, that all of the objects I create still get destroyed. Now I've got a function called make thing, and you can see it returns a shared pointer. Um, if I wanted to make a normal raw pointer, I would write fruit star. So a star and then the type I'm pointing to. To create a shared pointer, which remember is just an object presenting an abstraction, I use std shared pointer of, using my angle brackets, std shared pointer of fruit. Notice that the type I put in here is the name of the class. I don't put a fruit star or anything, I just put fruit. Uh, and this we read this as shared pointer to fruit. Um, here, just like in my earlier video about this, I am using C style initialization to make it more clear this is a function call. Um, but of course, you could do this with um, uniform initialization, and I will do that later in this video. There is a function in the standard library called make shared. Um, contrast it to the make pair function we've already seen. The make shared function takes, uh, it, it's an example of something that has to take, use both angle brackets and round brackets, but it's a function. So I first tell it, what do I want to create? I would like to make a new instance of type fruit. Uh, and then you give the constructor arguments. This is an example of a function with round brackets that can take apparently whatever you throw at it. No matter what you throw at it, it will be able to take those arguments and call the constructor for the type you want. So the fruit class has a constructor that takes one one argument. But if the constructor took two arguments, you would pass all of them in here. 
Um, and contrast that too with the new operator. I use the new operator. I say the type I'm creating and then I give the constructor arguments. The same is really happening with make shared. The make shared function is like the new operator, but it creates for you a smart pointer, not just a raw C style pointer. You give it the name of the type, you give it the constructor arguments. This function is, I think, parallel to a function we saw when we were demonstrating memory leaks. I create by dynamic allocation, an object with the name raspberry and an object with the name pineapple, and then I return only one of those two things. The other one just gets lost. What I'm going to demonstrate is, by the magic of smart pointers, when the smart pointer Z gets destroyed at the end of its scope, it notices it's the very last tether to this object, and it makes sure that it gets deleted. And I will unpack that further in the next video when I do a tracing example with uh, shared pointers. All right, so let's go down and take a look at main and do a few tasks before we get to the tracing example. Um, first, let's modify this to not create a raw pointer, but to create a smart pointer. In this case, a an object of, uh, of type std shared pointer. So we saw already the notation for that. It is a shared pointer to the um, type fruit. And uh, let's see, it's going to be called, um, what was it called? I guess I already forgot. It's called a. Okay, sorry about that. Um, shared pointer to fruit called a equals, and then I call std make shared. And I give make shared in the angle brackets the type that I'm constructing. And we are very close to seeing what the angle brackets actually mean deep down, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, and we'll give it the name pair. All right. So um, the make shared function returns my, sh my, my, my shared pointer. I guess I should be initializing it uh, with uniform initialization like I said I would. There we go. Um, and then um, I'm going to try, I'm not even going to use the object for anything. I'm just going to allocate it here. We should observe that as part of what the make shared function does, a constructor will be called and we'll see pair getting constructed. And then down here, um, I'll first I'll run that and we'll just see what happens. But then I'm going to see what happens if I set this to a null pointer. Um, I'm going to save the file so the compiler compiles the correct version. We'll expand the output window and we'll try running this. All right, so main one, I call the constructor, the fruit constructor for pair. The code doesn't, nothing else is actually happening right now. I just print stuff out and the code ends. Notice that I never use the variable, nor do I make any effort to deallocate the object. The object is being created dynamically for me, just like it would with a new operator. And yet, at the end of main, when the very last pointer to it gets destroyed, so the object A, which is the, the smart pointer referring to the, um, the, the fruit, when it gets destroyed down at the end of main, after main 5, I call a destructor. The smart pointer notices that it is the very last pointer to that object, and it destroys the object for me. So there's never a worry of a memory leak in this context. Um, there are still cases, as I mentioned, there are things you can't use shared pointers for, but this example is a valid use case of shared pointers. Let's try this. Suppose later I decide I want my pointer A to no longer point to the thing. So maybe I should mock this up a bit. So here is the object I created. It's been created outside of main. It's been dynamically allocated. So here's main. And I've created this pointer, the smart pointer called A. And A is initialized to point to my object. If I ever redirect A, so the object's been tagged, it now has one pointer to it. Okay, if I ever redirect the pointer A, or A gets destroyed, A is a smart pointer. It knows that when its value changes, for example, if I were to set it to point to nothing, so if I set it to have the value null, a would say on the way, while you're making the change, the assignment operator for the shared pointer would say before I do the actual change, so I've got, I point to this, hey, you're about to reassign me a shared pointer to point somewhere else. I guess that means I no longer point to this fruit. Oh, wait a second. The fruit now has zero things pointing to it. I will now destroy it. And then A points to null. This is all happening in the assignment operator, in the copy assignment operator for um, the smart, the shared pointer object. Again, shared pointer is a regular object presenting you with a convincing abstraction. Uh, okay, so we'll try running this. And we can see now, after main 2, the destructor for my fruit object is being called. Because A, while you reassigned it, noticed that the fruit object would be lost if um, it, the pointer was redirected. And therefore, it destroyed it because it knew that the, the object's time had come. I'm going to sketch the diagram out again. So here is my object pear, again, and it's of type fruit. And then here I am in main. I'll be a bit more careful where I put the box for main this time. All right, so let's try task 3. So we'll comment out um, task 2. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassign A. So I'm going to use uh, an assignment statement to set A to be the result of creating a brand new object. Uh, that would be make shared uh, also a fruit, and the name here is going to be grapefruit. 
Um, and this is going to be very similar to the previous case. So I've got my pointer A. It already exists. It's already pointing at pear. Now I make a new object that says grapefruit. And I say, OK, A, I'd like you to point at grapefruit. Both objects should be tagged because they've been made by make shared. So I've tagged this with uh, grapefruit was just created by make shared. And while it's being created, we hold on to it. Um, so currently, it sort of has no pointers pointing to it because what's really happened is make shared has sent back a pointer you can use. In the process of assigning that pointer to A, A notices that it will be the very last thing to point at this thing called pair. So it gets decremented to zero. We destroy it. And then A can redirect itself to point at grapefruit instead. Therefore, I should expect between main three and main four to see a call to the the destructor of pear. In particular, I should see the constructor for grapefruit because I first call make shared, then make shared returns the object that contains the word grapefruit, and then A destroys the pear object as part of assigning the new pointer to A. So I should see constructor for grapefruit and then destructor for pear. And sure enough, there it is. So in between main three and main four, we destroy the old fruit object because nobody points to it. And now we um, construct a new object uh, that is then pointed to by A. And we'll clear the diagram again. Um, OK, so on task 4A is going to be create another uh, shared pointer um, and set it to equal A. So I'll say, OK, it's going to be the same uh, target type. So shared PTR to fruit B. And I'll just set that to a copy of A. Um, and so to catch up with where our diagram is right now, we currently only have one fruit object, and it's the one that says grapefruit because the pear was already destroyed. Um, so that's going to be tagged with currently one. It's got grapefruit. So I'm going to just set the diagram up to be the way it would be right before step 4a. And then here's main. All right, and then here's a. So as of the beginning of task 4a, a points at the object with the name grapefruit. Um, and then I create on line 44 a new pointer called B. And it also will be set to point to grapefruit. But in doing this, the copy constructor for a shared pointer catches this and say, oh, you're making a copy of a shared pointer. That means you now have two pointers to the same object. So it increments the tag. Now, grape, now the shared pointers both know there are two things pointing at this object. Um, OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again redirect um, the value of, I'm going to have A point at something else. We saw previously when I reset what A pointed to, the thing it already pointed to, the pair, got destroyed. We'll notice here that doesn't happen. Because even if A points somewhere else, there will still be something that points at grapefruit. So grapefruit will not be destroyed. So I'm going to do make thing. So the make thing function, and we'll come back to the, log the exact logic um, uh, piece by piece in the next video. The make thing function will first allocate raspberry, then it'll allocate pineapple, and then it will return the thing um, pointing to raspberry, which means the raspberry object will not get destroyed. But the pineapple object will, because as of line 26, when the scope ends, nothing else points to pineapple, and the pointer isn't getting sent back. So nobody will be able to access it again. Therefore, the shared pointer z will know this and will destruct the pineapple object, whereas the raspberry object will end up getting assigned to A. So we'll try running this. And notice, uh, there it is, the constructor for, for raspberry, the constructor for pineapple, the destructor for pineapple, and then finally we destroy grapefruit and raspberry. And so the state of the program after this would be would look something like this. So there's the, the fruit that was just created, raspberry. It's going to be tagged because it's going to be pointed to by A. It's going to be tagged to have one thing. A no longer points at grapefruit. It instead points over, that's a pretty bad arrow, it instead points here at raspberry. Um, and grapefruit, uh, in the process of modifying A, the tag for grapefruit was modified to say only one thing points to it. Um, and I could go further here and say, suppose at the end of um, step of task four, I set B to point to nothing. To, put, to be a null pointer. Were I to do that, then we'll notice that the destructor for grapefruit gets called before main 5. Because what I'm doing right before main 5 is I am setting uh, b to point to nothing, which means b is getting redirected away from grapefruit. It notices that, sets the, the tag to 0, destroys grapefruit, and then b is allowed to be reassigned to point to nothing. Um, that's a pretty bad looking null pointer, but 
There it is. Uh, and so because the smart pointers can take control of every time they change, so when you copy them, when you make a new copy of it, which increments the, the tag, when you destroy one, so it, or when you reassign it to point somewhere else, whenever a pointer gets modified or destroyed, it keeps track of that tag and knows to destroy the underlying object if it's the last thing to point to it. And also take a minute to observe that because shared pointer is an ordinary class, the only reason any of this is possible is because of all of the features we've seen over the past few weeks for abstraction and encapsulation. We've seen everything you need to write your own shared pointers, besides, I guess, the angle brackets. The pointer um, A and the pointer B have their own assignment operators. They have their own copy constructor that also manages the tags. Um, and their constructors and destructors are designed to handle cases where they're the last pointer pointing at something. So that's it. All these smart pointers really are are clever uses of abstraction. There's no magic happening behind the scenes. But hey, whether it's magic or not, I'll take it. This is way better for me than having to worry about deleting my objects myself, to have the smart pointers keep track of things, do their own bookkeeping and handling it uh, for me. So, um, of course, though, we've just seen something that involves drawing diagrams and having arrows all over the place. So if maybe you've seen already, maybe you've figured it out. This is going to be our nasty tracing question for this part of the course. And for the in the next video, I will talk about going through that kind of tracing.